What do the leaked NVIDIA documents tell us? So the NVIDIA documents that we've been able to see indicate that NVIDIA is actively seeking whatever video data they can find. Um, it looks like they're predominantly going after YouTube and they're using collated data sets that have links to YouTube videos and actively using whatever programs they can find to both download the videos and also mask the fact that it's coming from, in this case, NVIDIA. They're hiding what's called their internet protocol address or their IP address to actively do this. It raises interesting questions because it says that they're in this interesting gray zone about what they can and cannot download. And it raises also interesting questions about the sheer energy consumption, as well as the respect for whatever data rights of the video producers. And why is that boring for the everyday users of the internet? Because if you remember about a decade, a little bit more ago, there was this idea of web 2.0. It was this idea that folks could not just consume content and browse content on the internet, but they could also be producers, whether it's with blogs and then later with audio podcasts and, and then ultimately with video. And so a lot of people have put content out there. Um, some of that content they put out as part of a ad generating model with different companies, including Google and others, with the expectations that the content producers would be compensated for their content as it was watched. And now by doing this mass download, what happens is the AI is being trained and maybe there is one counted, you know, download towards the content producer, but then the AI is going to use it multiple times in the future with no source of revenue or at least attribution back to the original producers of that video content. What is being done to ensure that companies like OpenAI founder of ChatGPT train their model ethically? So one of the things we need to do right now is think about how can we give voice to content producers, content creators? And it might very well be that instead of actually expecting companies to do the right thing, we actually need to galvanize content producers to find some way to actually express their perceived contractual rights as content producers. 